Hey guys, on hand today we have the new 960 Evo. This is Samsung's new budget M2 NVMe SSD. We liked what we saw when testing the performance of Samsung's 960 Pro series nearly a month ago now. Sadly though, uh, availability is still very weak for the company's new flagship SSD. It's been a long wait for enthusiasts, and while it should finally be possible to order a 960 Pro, the drive's currently out of stock in all capacities at Newegg. And oddly, the one terabyte variant isn't expected to show itself until January 2nd. The 960 Pro's class-leading M2 NVMe performance, excellent endurance ratings, and 5-year warranty position as one of the fastest consumer-grade SSDs power users hope to get their hands on. Apart from availability, the only other drawback that we see is price, and while not outrageous by any means, a cost of $0.64 cents per gigabyte for the cheapest model is relatively expensive. Addressing this concern, Samsung has unleashed its more affordable 960 Evo series, which is also made in a smaller 250 gigabyte capacity. The crazy thing here being that the 250 gigabyte model costs just $130, taking the cost per gigabyte for this series down to around $0.50. Cents. That's still pretty pricey compared to TLC SATA drives, such as the Crucial MX300 for example, but we also expect the 960 Evo to have a performance advantage. Quite a considerable advantage I might add. Like the 960 Pro, the 960 Evo is powered by Samsung's Polaris controller coupled with Samsung's 48 layer VNAND. Although this new model has been outfitted with TLC memory instead of MLC, like the 960 Pro, the claimed impact on performance is minor with sequential read speeds dropping from 3.5GB per second to just 3.2GB per second. Meanwhile the write throughput goes from 2.1GB per second to 1.8GB per second. As just mentioned, the 960 EVO series really isn't that different from the Pro series we looked at last month. The only real change here being the use of TLC NAND flash rather than the costlier MLC NAND. In other words, you're paying over 20% less for an EVO drive when compared to a Pro, and yet the impact on performance could be considerably less than that. The new EVO series should also compare strongly against Crucial's TLC-based MX300, which claims sequential read speeds of 530 megabytes per second and write speeds of 510 megabytes per second. With that, we're keen to see what Samsung's TLC NVMe SSD brings to the table. As just mentioned, the 960 EVO series really isn't that different from the Pro series we looked at last month, the only real change being the use of TLC NAND flash rather than the costlier MLC NAND. The use of TLC memory brings three key differences for the EVO series. Probably least concerning is the reduced endurance rating, though the slightly lower performance isn't that wiring either, whereas the cost savings will be of interest to many of you. Compared to MLC, which stores 2 bits per cell, TLC stores 3 bits per cell to improve density, or capacity, but in doing so reduces performance, and most crucially, endurance. The 960 Pro 512GB model, for example, sports an endurance rating of 400TB written, and that figure has been halved for the 500GB EVO model. As such, the warranty period offered by Samsung has been reduced from 5 years to 3. Samsung claims under typical load the 1TB model will consume 5.7 watts, 5.4 watts for the 500GB model and 5.3 watts for the 250GB model. Those are similar ratings to the 960 Pro series. All three versions of the 960 EVO measure only 80mm long, just as we saw with the 960 Pro series. This means they adhere to the M2 2280 form factor. The drives weigh between 8.3 and 9 grams, with the 1 terabyte version naturally being the heaviest. All three models boast the same 3.2 gigabytes per second read speed, though the write performance does vary. The 250 gigabyte model is rated at 1.5 gigabytes per second, the 512 gigabyte model at 1.8 gigabytes per second, and the 1 terabyte model at 1.9 gigabytes per second. As expected, the drives also vary when looking at the input-output operations per second. The 250 gigabyte model is good for 333,000 operations read and 300,000 operations write. The 500 gigabyte model is rated at 330,000 operations read and write, while the 1 terabyte model is said to be capable of 380,000 operations read and 360,000 write. Samsung has announced that there will be a new and improved version of the Magician software, though sadly it won't be available until the end of November. What we do know, or at least have been told, is that this is a complete redesign of the software. For more information on the software and other features of the new 960 EVO series, be sure to check out the written review over at techspot.com. We will put the link in the description. The 960 EVO came in slightly slower than the 950 Pro series in our game installation test, which we feel is an impressive result. 
At just 72 seconds, the 960 EVO series was a good bit faster than Intel's SSD 600P series. Moving on to our True Image 2015 test, the 960 EVO took just 149 seconds to complete the 45GB backup. This places it on par with drives such as the SM951 NVMe and not a great deal slower than the 950 Pro. Again, we see that the 960 EVO series is only slightly slower than the 950 Pro in the 7-zip file extraction test, taking just 57 seconds. Of course, the 960 Pro is quite a bit fast here, but that's to be expected as this is an extreme use case scenario. Here we can see that the 960 EVO sustains 660 megabytes per second in the 7-zip test, slightly faster than the SM951 NVMe drive then. For large file transfers, the new Samsung TLC-based SSD led the way. Although the 960 Pro was 30% faster, the 960 EVO 500GB drive was anything but slow, besting the rest here. The 960 EVO closely followed the 960 Pro in our program test, delivering an impressive throughput of 512 megabytes per second. Again, the 960 Pro series was almost 30% faster than the 960 EVO, though the 960 EVO was still able to beat everything else with an impressive throughput of 856 megabytes per second. For more benchmarks, be sure to check out the written version over at techspot.com. Again, we'll provide that link in the video description. Roughly this time last year, we hailed in the 950 Pro series as the new king of desktop storage performance. And although the 960 Pro put an end to that reign last month, we could very well have been referring to the 960 EVO as the company's new flagship had it arrived first. For the most part, the 960 EVO managed to match the 950, and in areas where the 950 series showed weakness, the 960 EVO shined. Not only that, but the 960 EVO doesn't appear to suffer from throttling under heavy load, and of course, it comes at a lower MSRP. Unsurprisingly, the new EVO series is slower than the 960 Pro, but not alarmingly so, and it of course comes at a significantly lower price to make up the difference. The 250GB 960 EVO is said to deliver similar performance to the 500GB unit we reviewed, and that's pretty incredible considering its relatively low $130 asking price. That said, we are yet to test this model, and there does seem to be a bit of controversy surrounding the performance of the 250GB model, so we'll have to wait and check that out for ourselves shortly. The 500GB EVO we tested also looks to be an extremely good buy. At $250 or 50 cents per gigabyte, it looks pretty hard to beat. For those seeking an even larger drive, the 1TB version comes in at $480, or 20% cheaper than the 1TB 960 Pro, making the EVO an even smarter choice for users. At a cost of 48 cents per gigabyte, it also well exceeds the value of Intel's SSD 750 series, which you might as well forget about at this point. And Toshiba's OCZ RD400A series can't compete either. Perhaps the only worthwhile alternative is Plexus M8PE, though we are yet to benchmark that product. The 960 EVO 500 gigabyte showed no faults throughout our tests. Its price versus performance ratio is seemingly unparalleled, and Samsung's new NVMe 2.0 driver plus the upcoming magician software uh, should ensure a smooth user experience. Overall there's no better storage option for enthusiasts on a budget and I might even upgrade my 950 Pro 512 gigabyte that I have in my personal system to the uh, 1 terabyte 960 EVO. What do you guys think of Samsung's new 960 EVO series? Let us know in the comments below and if you have any questions we'd also be happy to answer those and well that about wraps this one up guys. I'm your host Steve and I'll catch you next time.